Good morning everyone and welcome back to the farm. As is tradition, we're kind of fighting mother nature right now. It's been raining on and off. That's gonna make our prospects of cutting any soybeans today low, but we could find some work to do and depending on how it pans out, we may be able to harvest some corn. We're going to attempt to fix this tongue on the head cart. Yeah. Keep the nut on that way, the head gets more. Probably thread it in. Well, that would make sense. Did you align that other one? This is the one that needs aligned. I think that they had something happen with it. They broke yeah. the tongue on it. This right here has some play in it. Did you, yeah. did you see him when he moves it? Yeah. And so when we drive down the road, it starts to have play. And then the minute these tires start to move at all, yeah. then the back tires start to move. Then it just starts dogtailing because it's the all wheel steer. But no, the other cart, it's actually really good. Oh, see, I didn't know that. It can, you can go like 40, 45 with Here, it. Here, I went to town about 25 miles, 20 mile an hour with it. You're out, you're out. Probably can't put the head on. Change of plans, we're going to try and pull it and turn the wheel and get enough clearance that we can lift the tongue up, unhook the spring, and pull it apart. After all that entertainment, we're gonna do what we probably should have done from the start, and that's just take the draper off the head cart. Backup camera needs clean. Boop, boop, boop. Nothing to it. Yeah, we wasted about 30 minutes. Should've just got the combine out from the start. Okay, set the head cart back down. Back to the barn. Might as well do it in style. That just goes to show, sometimes in the quest of saving time, you cost yourself more time. Live and learn. I'm sure some of the more astute members of my audience have noticed that the S670 and the 30-foot Draper is nowhere to be found. That's because bright and early this morning, Jeff took the Draper into John Deere to put a new belt on it, and they also informed us that they weren't going to be able to work on it because they didn't have any spare combines. So, we took our S670 in to get it done today, in case we cut beans the next few days. The head cart tongue is loaded up in the back of the truck. I'm gonna run it down to Sigal Welding. It is just a small little town south of Neoga, so maybe 10 to 15 miles to the south of here. For what is most likely going to be a portion of the price of just replacing that section, should have a pretty good, reliable tongue to our head cart. It also doesn't cause the head to violently dogtail down the road. In my experience, second to having an extremely qualified, reliable, and efficient service department at your local John Deere dealership, a great welder is invaluable. And a lot of times, they're a lot cheaper than replacing the part. I've heard a lot of stories where people thought they were gonna have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to put something back together, brought in a good welder, had it fixed for a couple hundred bucks. I'm actually pretty shocked. I thought this was going to be a drop off and come get later project. And he said, stick around, I'll have it done in 20 minutes. Ready? Yeah. Not too much in there now. That's helped. You need to go a little more? I think we can go more. Go ahead. Good enough. Does it have much play to it? No. The new combine has 70 hours on it. You're supposed to change the break-in oil right around 100. We're just gonna go ahead and do it now because we have a window with the weather delay. There's no rain here now. It looks like we may have 45 minutes to an hour to squeeze this in. Should be enough time to dump that oil out, put new oil in. How am I supposed to dump the oil when all of our oil buckets are corn buckets? I don't believe that there's a break-in period for hydraulic oil. If there was, we wouldn't have to worry about it because they changed the entire system when they replaced those motors and pumps. Oh, long hair. That's okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 44 quarts, so when it gets to... Oh, more like 45 or 46. The new oil is pretty much full. Let's keep an eye on it real quick. Once it's topped off, we're gonna start the combine, make sure there's no leaks. She's got the green light to run another couple hundred hours. The loading auger looks extra long without a head on the combine. There's no reason to sit here and wait for the beans to dry. 
If we can get across the ground, we might as well pick some corn. Fueling up the auger tractor and getting the extension for the end of the spout. I think that means we're probably going to set up to a corn bin, which means we're going to be picking. Believe. Ah, right where we left it. To load all these bins here at the main farm under the shiver system, we got to put this out on. Because if not, the metal auger and the metal shiver system don't exactly mesh well. We didn't have to use it on the bean bin because it doesn't have anything up there. Ah, just some good old Saturday family bonding over some auger placement on a bin. For some reason, and I don't know why, it always seems to be very entertaining. I kind of try to make myself a third party in that transaction. We're gonna eat a quick lunch because we haven't even ate breakfast and then we're gonna go pick some corn. Our plans to pick some corn have kind of fallen off the rails. There's some rain showers moving in from the southwest headed right towards us. They're gonna be here any minute. We figure we might as well pull the combine in, shut everything down. We're gonna wait and see if we're gonna be able to pick any corn. I don't think we will because it looks pretty heavy. Won't take much to keep us out of the fields. I'll keep you guys posted. I'm gonna go hang out with my family, maybe play some video games, maybe get some exercise, catch up on YouTube comments. It is Sunday and we are back in action. Had about a half inch of rain, so 13-ish millimeters. We took it easy this morning to see what kind of hand Mother Nature was going to deal to us. A lot of showers in the area. Unfortunately though, it looks like we're gonna be able to pick corn. As they say, there ain't no rest for the wicked. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to be creative in the moment. Moisture is running 16%. That's about where we want it. Yield showing 240-ish. Duty calls. Ah, the inefficiencies of opening up a field. Corn seems to be doing well though. Doing my part to help with the logistics, bringing the third truck to the field. There's nowhere we're gonna keep up even hauling down a mile of the road. Yeah, Chris, you need to fix your driveway. It's rough. It's like a war zone. We're picking right next to these three nine pioneer beans that were very green but dry. Pods are tough. I think if we gave it a day or two, sun stayed out, temperature stayed warm, and we had a little bit of a breeze, they may cut. It takes very little moisture to make it difficult to cut soybeans. Like I said, we only had a half inch of rain and we're picking corn. Mother Nature is certainly trying to give us the day off right now. Looks like we got rain over there, clear skies and sun where we're picking corn, and then some heavier rain to the north. As long as it doesn't start pouring, we're gonna keep picking. As I say that, there's raindrops on the window. So we are right there, that blue dot. This is the rain we're looking at right out there and we're hoping it's going to clip us and maybe go north i don't know that we're going to get that lucky we're going to keep picking i don't know if we'll keep going for a while get lucky or we'll shut down soon you never know with mother nature well that is us right there according to this radar the storm went 
north of us or right over the top of us. That direction is north. Doesn't appear that there's rain up there. If you look to the south though, that's where the rain went. So the radar people need to figure their stuff out. I'll go to my deathbed saying this. Weather people are the only people who make commodity market people look good. Let's just say that they have a wide range of guesses. They never seem to be right. The boss and I shut down the combine and the grain cart, come back to the bin site. Chris and Jeff are complaining about the auger making some kind of a strange noise. It's Sunday, so we'll take our time, make sure nothing breaks down. It seems to be getting a lot of grain under there, but maybe the bearing be out. Maybe the bearing's out, yeah, like you said. It's not gonna twist into you. Yeah, I can never see it twist into you. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of mangled in there. It's more. Yeah, it's definitely going out. Definitely looks like the main bearing down here is going out. So causing it to rattle a little bit. Probably would have ran for either 100 more bushels or 100,000, but at some point it was gonna go out. Think it would've made 100,000, Jeff? No. No? We had 200 bushel on the ground. It always happens on a Sunday. You can always just take it down and bring the other one. But it looks like we're gonna get rained out. Dad and Jeff are gonna work on that. Probably look at it, I don't think we can fix it today. We're still fighting the rain down to the south, so we're gonna go around the combine, pick the trucks and the grain cart full. I think this is why some people take Sunday off. So I have to deal with this kind of stuff. Not sure if it's even necessary for me to point out where the rain is. It is moving to the northeast, so hopefully we miss it. You know, I don't want to run the combine, but someone's got to do it. Pesky auto steer, you got to turn the row sense on every time. Okay, there we go. Fine rip. Separator engage. Head on. Speed her up. Auto steer's not on, so I can't harvest. Just kidding. And we're off. Making some corn. I don't know about this yield monitor. That seems too good to be true. 309, 290, 280, 270. Okay, 250, that's much more reasonable. 270. Pretty good. We're showing 270, but that's what we showed the other day and ended up making 250. Can't complain about 250 bushel corn. But you hate to see 270, then have to take 10% off. Since we don't have a grain cart driver right now, because he's operating the combine, we're just going to fill this truck the old school way. Load the truck. Not much I can do about the shaking. The separator's still running. That's what you feel like after running this all day. We're at seven and a half miles an hour, pretty close to power limited. Losses look extremely good. And 5,000 bushels an hour, assuming that the yield's right, because that does affect that. Why do you need an X9 when you can have one of these for two thirds of the price? Which actually would calculate out the same because this has two thirds of the capacity, so okay. disregard what I just said. Depth reception don't fail me now. Oh boy, someone's feeding the pigeons. Never would have done that in the grain cart. Everything's right in the world. Auger's running, truck's back, boss is in the combine. Any good guesses as to what the best way to fix a bearing on auger is on a Sunday? You pull the broken auger out of the way, you get your other 13 inch auger, slide it in the same spot, and you keep going like nothing happened. Now let's just hope the bearing doesn't go out on that one too. We're running like a well-oiled machine right now. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but 
Every time I finish loading the last truck at the field, an empty truck shows up, the combine hasn't stopped. This is the longest I've stopped here for the last 30 minutes. We are still dancing around the weather right now. There's showers in the distance popping up all around. As of right now though, it's still dry here in the field. I don't know if all the dry dust off the combine is just drying out the atmosphere so no rain can drop here, or we're just burning the rest of our luck for the year. Either way, an acre is an acre, and you love to have them harvested. Now here is the question I ask every season to see what your answers are. If the absolute first day that you can get out and work, whether it be harvest or planting, is on a Sunday, do you start on that Sunday, or do you wait until the following Monday? I know what we would do, but what would you guys do? A lot of farm folk thinks that that is a bad omen or a bad way to start the season. I don't really believe in those kinds of things, especially because I've been joking about this rain and it hasn't rained yet. So I surely think by now all these comments I've made would have it raining on us. Did I do this? That answers that. Finally ran out of luck. Although it did pretty much just stop raining within a couple minutes of it starting. Dad's taking the combine in, probably fuel it up. He thinks it's a little too sticky out here to keep going. We picked in a lot worse conditions last week in that muddy cornfield. It is Sunday, maybe he's just ready to be done. Not gonna complain at all, because we had a pretty productive afternoon. Started a little bit before one, it's five o'clock right now, picked 58 acres. And according to my calculations, for whatever they're worth, we picked over 15,000 bushels of corn. If you haven't checked out the link in the description and headed over to farmfocus.com to check out the channel's merch, I think it's pretty sweet. Not trying to pressure you, but if you're in the market for some cool t-shirts and you want everyone to know that you know a lot about farming or that you have a young one that knows a lot about farming or wants to be a farmer, head on over there to the link. Appreciate all your support, folks. Nothing wrong with taking a Sunday evening to yourself. Like I said, most people don't even work on Sunday. Personally, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to deciding if your operation wants to work on Sunday. I know some large farmers that take Sunday off, they still get all their crops in and out. I know others who hit it full speed without taking any breaks other than rain delays. It's your operation, do what you want. We usually try to make the most out of our time, but I've noticed as our staff has aged, we don't work as late as we used to. Hey, look at that folks, a real truck. A 10 speed manual transmission. We're gonna spend a lot of time with these 10 speeds. So let's see if we can make it work. In my opinion, and I don't spend much time in those trucks, downshifting is the hardest part of the pattern. Good auger. We need to get the power takeoff shaft off, and then we need to pull the bearing. In theory, it sounds easy. Probably gonna be challenging. Okay. Yeah, we've moved it probably half inch. Do we move the gear in or move it? No, it slid off the shaft. I can see the mark. Okay, now. Don't pop out, watch your knee. No. Yeah, we've made progress. As long as it's cool. I don't know if this goes all the way through or what it does. It does. Okay, how are we gonna get that off, Andy? Is that something you use a gear puller on? Yeah. Go ahead. There's a steel ball. The bearing has been completely removed. We don't have the part because it's Sunday, so we'll sit here and wait. Just gonna head up around sunrise to pick up that bearing from the auger shop. We don't have it in stock, it's Sunday. There's nothing we can do about it. 
really cannot have a complaint in the world when you look at this view out here right now. Absolutely beautiful. We could definitely pick some more corn, load the grain cart, but at the end of the day, it's six o'clock right now. The sun's gonna set here in the next 30 minutes to 45 minutes. We're gonna take it easy. As always, I really appreciate you tuning in. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you wanna see more, and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace!